Auditorium in the beautiful glittering ring row. The red rose in hand, signing autographs with members of his family as he likes to refer. There's a good picture of Percy and Eric. And Eric crawls into the ring for this unexpected event against gentleman Chris Adams. His family. <laughs> hey, you know what? I would have liked to have been in the back. <laughs> The, the handshake between these two wrestlers. I bet it was a real sportsman-like <laughs> display, you know? <laughs> oh, that's great. That is great. What are you having so much fun about? You just love it that these two guys are at odds. They hate each other. They always have. They've got terrible egos. <laughs> the two worst egos I've ever seen in my life. What are these girls, the hogheads? Those are the USWA ring attendants. Very rude, Terrence. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to welcome the man from England, gentleman Chris Adams. Gentleman Christopher Adams comes down, ready for this unexpected showdown. And I think it's obvious who the fans have sided in with. Sure, they're signing Chris, that's who. Now, how did you come to that conclusion? You got a great warm response. That's the kind of response I always got when I came to the ring, and I got plenty of fans. Oh, brother. Chris Adams arrives, and this is about, realistically, folks, that I think most fans wish really would not occur, and they would like to hope that these two could be partners rather than adversary. Well, we're seeing it right here exclusively with the USWA, and let's see what happens. And don't forget, we've got Jerry the King Lawler and Kerry Von Erich yet to come this week. That's the one I'm excited about, Mark. I tell you what, <laughs> Jerry the King Lawler, the king of wrestling, the greatest wrestler to ever put on a pair of boots. He's no company champion, no sir. He's the greatest. Chris Adams is asking for the house microphone. Let's pick up this comment. Just before we start this, Eric, I want you to know, and I'd like everybody here to know, and everybody out there to know, that I don't really want this match deep down inside. And I know, I know you really don't want this match deep down inside. But we got ourselves into this, and we signed on the dotted line for a contract, on a contract, to fight here this evening in front of millions of viewers on national TV. So all I can say to you is, I know you don't back down, and you know I don't back down, so we've got to go through with this. But what I want to do, I want to put it to you that the best wrestler may the best wrestler win. You understand what I'm saying? Well, I would say that Chris's heart is not into this, and I'm not sure that Eric's is either. I think they may have some regrettable feelings about tempers getting out of control. Embry doesn't look like he regrets anything. Look at him. Well, now here's your friendly handshake that you were scoffing about earlier as Eric now has asked to say a few words. Hey, Chris Adam. I don't want the match any more than you do, but there's been enough talking. And just like you said, may the best wrestler win. If we're gonna wrestle, we'll wrestle. If you wanna fight, we'll fight. Enough talk. Okay, here we go. Now let me go back and explain how this happened. Chris and Eric had had trouble with Devastation Incorporated, and it almost looked like Akbar was deliberately setting things up where it would look like that either Chris or Eric had double crossed the other, trying to keep them mad at each other and therefore separated, but it didn't work. Finally, they tag team. But when they got in a tag team bout, Gorgeous Gary Young was one of their opponents, and Gorgeous Gary was about to murder Chris Adams' left leg and knee. Tony Adams was at ringside, was very concerned about Chris every time he'd go to the floor and would try to comfort him and help him out. 
Eric was concerned about Chris getting counted out of the ring. There was a conflict of interest. When Eric tried to move Tony out of the way where he could help, Tony fell over. Chris thought that Eric had shoved her over. When Eric went to help her up, Chris thought that Eric was trying to attack her, and that's when it all broke loose. The way I heard it, he was trying to attack her. Look at Embry. Oh, boy, he's in all his glory tonight. Look at him, 40 weight motor oil on the old hair. <laughs> boy, he looks like he just came in off a long, hard night, doesn't he? You know, I don't blame Adams. This Embry's disgusting. But, you know, Adams is pretty disgusting in his own right. Tell you what, the night that this bout is taking place on is a record cold night here in the state of Texas. And many, many fans have braved the brutal conditions to be here, and we are grateful for the USWA faithful and glad you're with us here on television as well. Here's Eric Embry and Chris in a struggle, turning around in the corner and then along the ropes. Oh, tempers are going to flare early, Mark. Do you see that? You're hoping they are, aren't you? You're darn right I'm hoping they are. I hope to see a real man's fight right here. Most of the fans are hoping this has a happy ending. Two of the most popular wrestlers ever to set foot in the ring here in the Dallas Fortatorium at each other right here. I hope it has a happy ending also. I hope they hurt each other. Both of them get carried out on stretcher. Over and down goes gentleman Chris Adams. Close line by Chris who got back to his seat quickly. Look at that boy. Embry had a dazed look in his eyes, but he's always kind of dazed looking. He gave, he gave Adams a, or, uh, yeah, he gave Adams a clothesline there for his trouble, Mark. Eric Embry and Chris each taking their time, trying to not let their emotions get the best of them, it would appear. The referee stands, headlock. Adams turns him over the hip, leg scissors by Embry, and we're seeing a lot of great wrestling here, holds and counter holds. And while Eric has him in the leg scissors, we need to jump in and take a quick commercial break. We'll return to the Sportatorium for this unexpected event in a moment. Leg scissors by Flamboyant Eric Embry. As these two get right in each other's face, and this could break open at any moment. I'll tell you what, Mark. Again, the longer that this match goes, I think it's going to be in Chris Adams' favor. Look at it. He's in a lot better shape than Embry is. And I believe if it goes 30 minutes, I believe Adams has got to be favored. Can you ever come out here and narrate about and be impartial, not that, take sides? Hey, that was wrestling, wasn't it? He hit him with a fist. There's nothing wrestling about that. That's blatant cheating. Chris doesn't look like he liked that too much either, does he? I bet he'll get a little revenge on Eric. You didn't answer my question. I didn't hear your question, okay? Well, you were too busy babbling. I was too busy calling the match. Did you notice when Adams, when he retaliated there, he used the forearm, perfectly legal. Here's Eric, and then leg scissors by Chris, and Eric right back out, and again they have the stare down. You know, this match has got all the, the possibilities in the world, but so far it's kind of boring, you know? One of them needs to just throw caution into the wind and just nail the other guy. Now that's what they're doing. It's obvious to me they're trying to stick to good, clean wrestling, and like they said earlier, may the best wrestler win. They're trying to make a feud out of it. Oh, what do you call it? I mean, they're in the ring fighting, aren't they? They're throwing punches, aren't they? If that's not a feud, what is? Eric really nails Chris, and Adams goes face down. And I have a hard time getting excited about this because I like both men. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't care that much for either one of them, and I have a hard time getting excited about it. You know, it might pick up. Adams backs him into the ropes, whips Embry off. What a clothesline. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that might improve the looks on Embry's face. Eric slow to get up. Chris Adams in the driver's seat. Mark, he just nailed him right on the nose. He may have broke Embry's nose. Eric Embry has that big right block. Adams 
the struggle into the turnbuckle they go. Right here, while he's got him down, he needs to really try and take it to Eric. That's it, get him out on the floor and hit him with a chair or something. Head into the turnbuckle, rather into the ring mat, and Eric grabs him and takes him back for a second dose. Chris blocks it, grabs Eric, boom. Hey, you notice the crowd's not hollering as much for Emory right now, are they, Mark? Back in the ring, it's Adams turning Eric Emery over. Eric master the pile driver. Adams master of the patented Chris Adams super kick. Hey! What right in the world that figures? Emery hits Bronco Lubitsch. Down goes the referee who was trying to separate them, and Eric Emery didn't want to be separated. Oh, here he goes. He's going to pull the straps down. What's that supposed to do? makes him look pregnant. Here comes another referee. This is Tony Falcon who signals for the bell to sound and Chris Adams hits him. And the adams Emery situation is getting more wound up than most of us had hoped. The bell is sounded. It's officially over, but unofficially is what counts at this point. Yeah, now that it's over, Chris Adams seems to be getting the upper hand. He's taking it to Embry, Mark. He's setting him up for a suplex, but no, he's not going to get it. He's just going to keep nailing him with right hands. Super kicking. There it is. Now, here come a locker room full of wrestlers to try to separate these two, knowing that this is going nowhere fast. This is out of hand. You know, Embry started the whole thing. He nailed Bronco Lubitsch. <laughs> It's his fault. Chris Adams should be the winner in this match, Mark. Well, they're at it again. And the fans don't know whether to yell or what. They're confused. As two of the most talented and popular USWA wrestlers are at each other's throat. This may get good, you know? Maybe, maybe while they got Eric laying down there on the ground, Adams ought to try and stomp his face. Adams is fighting anybody holding on to him, and here we go again. Oh, Adams really wants Embry, you know, just... He should have never pushed Adams' wife. Are you satisfied, Terrence? I guess you got what you wanted. Yeah, I would like to see both of them get hurt, you know? That's what I was rooting for. I didn't get to see that. Well, I hope we have this situation separated for the time being, with each man restrained in their respective corner. Well, that's the situation between Eric and Chris. And we'll just keep it here. Dustin Rhodes holding on to Chris Adams along with Johnny Rand. And we're going to have to get out of this because I don't want to see any more of this and I hope it doesn't get worse. We'll be back for our main event, Kerry and Lawler, in a moment.